Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at C++ functions. Now in a previous tutorial I showed how to create a void function, which is the display intro function that is already in this program. So if you're not familiar with void functions, I recommend that you watch that first. And here we're going to look at how to create a value returning function. So in our program, our display intro function comes down here and it runs two cout statements that welcomes the user. The next thing that our program is going to do is to ask them for their favorite sport. And then we use a cin to get their input and assign it to the variable sport. So rather than having this in our main program, again, we're going to modularize it and put it into a separate function. So I'm going to begin by cutting these two lines out, and then I'm going to move down to after my main function, where I've got a comment in here that says, OK, this is the section where my user defined functions are. And I'm going to create a function. This is going to return a string. So this is going to be a return type of string. And I'm going to say get input. And inside the curly braces, I'm going to paste in my two lines of code that I have already. That does the C out with what is your favorite sport. And then we get C in. Now, as you saw with void functions, in order to get this to work properly, we have to do a couple of things. First of all, it's going to need to be called within our main function. So I'm just going to copy this part, which is the name of our function. That's what we need to use. And I'm going to come in here after display intro. Okay, after we see the intro, then we want to get the input. And it also needs to have a function prototype up here, because as you saw with the void function, the compiler doesn't know about any of the functions that are that come after main. So we can basically copy this line and then paste it in as our function prototype at the top because we our function prototype has to specify the return type and the name of the function. And so now we have everything in place that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and I get a failed message. So what failed? Why didn't it work? So I'm going to look for my error message, and here we have it flagged, use of undeclared identifier sport. And then it thought that maybe we meant sort, but I did mean sport. So it doesn't recognize what sport is. And we looked up here, I did initialize a string called sport and set it equal to an empty string. But what the problem is, is the scope of the variables. And I have another tutorial that is gets more specifically into scope. But briefly, what that means is inside the function get input, it doesn't know what sport is. So this information for sport isn't automatically available in get input. So what I'm going to do to offset that, I'm going to create a different variable in here. Let's say string Let's just be real general and we'll just say um, the input. Instead of sport, we'll say the input. So now I'm declaring a variable inside my function and getting this information and from the keyboard and assigning it to that variable. And then what we want to do, let's just see if that works first, if we're able to build it without any errors. Okay, this is just a warning that says it reaches the end of a non-void function. So non-void, meaning, right, we had an example of a void function where it didn't return anything, but this is saying this should be returning a string, but we didn't return anything. It actually recognizes that we didn't specify a value to be returned. So we need to return a string, and the string that we have in here is called the input. So that's what we want to return. So now let me just run this and see if we have gotten rid of all of the errors. All right, there's no errors and no warnings. And it does start with what is your favorite sport? And so I'll type in a sport. 
and then it goes on with the rest of the program. So let's look at this a little closer. So we define our function prototype. It's going to return a string, and it's called get input. It's going to display the intro text, and then it's going to call the get input function. So when it gets to that point, it comes down here, reads through get input, create a new variable, output what is your favorite sport, so we're, we're getting that to display. It stops for our input, so we type in our input, and then we return the input. So when we return it, right, this value is sent back to where it was called from. So it was called from right up here. So what if we wanted to print out, just to check and make sure that we're getting out of our function what we are expecting. So we would expect to be able to get tennis back out of our function. So let's do a C out and display what's being returned. We're returning the input. So this would be what you would think would happen. So if we return the input and then we want to display it, if we go to run it, we get a fail error. And it says undeclared identifier v input. And again, we're getting into issues with scope. The input is created inside this function, and it's actually destroyed at the end of this function. So it's only available inside here. So it's what's called local scope. It's locally available within this function. So what's happening is when we return something, we're actually returning the value of this, not the actual variable name, but the value of it. So once we return it, how do we use it? Right? What's the value of doing that if we can't do something with it in here? I'm going to use our sport variable that has been defined. So I'm going to say sport equals get input. So when it returns a value, when it returns, it's going to set the value of that's returned to this, and then we're setting this equal to sport. So then to see it, all we have to do is output sport. So now let's run this and see what happens. It should say, you know, we enter a sport and then we type it in, it's gonna display it back out again. Let me put an end line in there so that it doesn't all run in together. Okay, so no, no build errors. And what is your favorite sport? So I'll type in tennis again. And it outputs what was typed in. So this, we're able to see the information that's getting passed back from the function. So this calls our get input function and then comes down here runs the code that's in here, we create a new variable for the input, output a message to the user, the user types something in, gets assigned to our variable, and then return our variable back to where it was called from. So it comes back up here and assigns the value to sport, and then we're able to print out sport. So that was working with a string. Let's do an example of one that is returning a number. So I'm going to copy, again, the two lines that I want to use in my function. I'm just, actually, I'm going to cut them, and I'm going to come down here where my user-defined functions are, and I'm going to create a new function. It's going to return an integer. It's going to be a whole number, and I'm going to call it getNumber. And then inside the curly braces, I'm going to paste in my two statements. Now again, we've, we saw with getting the input that it doesn't know what age is. So if I go to run it right now, it's going to give me an error on age because it doesn't know what it is. So in here, we'll create a new variable called the number. And then instead of age, we're going to say the number. And we need to return that value so I'm going to say return the number that represents the value that the user typed in from the keyboard. I also need to set this up as a function prototype. 
So I'm just going to copy this line and move up to the top and paste that in and put a semicolon. So now I have a function prototype for my get number. So let's run that now. So we have favorite sport. And now it jumps to favorite travel location. That's because I forgot to come in here and call my function. So I have a variable called age. So I'm going to use that in here. I'm going to say age equals get number. And just to be able to check to see that I am getting the value back out, I'm going to say age. So I'm going to run it again. And sport and age and it outputs it echoes back exactly what I put in there. So those are two examples of creating functions that use a return value type. One is a string and one is a number example.